Welcome to Attican Plays Railway Empire. All right, hi, this is Attican, and welcome to part two of our playthrough of the Rocky Mountain Mining using the engineer, and we've been using our pass-through rural station technique to um, connect to a, a bunch of citizens. We've got a lot of people hooked up into our network. We've hauled a lot of freight, and right now we're working on getting our quarterly profit up to $2.5 million, and we have to hit uh, by December. The last we could do would be December 1912, uh, because the goal was to actually do it by 1914. Of course, to get a perfect score, we have to uh, do that in half time. And so that's our goal, is to hit it by no later than December 1912. So we have just continued to expand this model. We're using the exact same model, rinse and repeat. We're finding a likely rural station in two cities. We're running a city to city line through that rural station and running a bunch of trains on it. Uh, typically I've been running like six trains on it. Uh, and uh, so far so good. So this just really keeps going and we just keep doing the same thing. Now there are a couple of things I do want to show you uh, through this little section right here. Uh, but I, I want to fast forward to those because I'm, right now, in fact, if you wonder what am I, what's he doing, I'm just looking around to decide where's my next victim, where's the next city I'm going to hook in, and how am I going to connect it with a uh, pass-through station. And uh, this process just goes on and on, so uh, let's not watch it over and over. Um, let's uh, move on to something more interesting. All right, so this is worth a quick uh, look. This is um, going to be a pass-through station between Idaho Falls and Missoula, which is a town a little bit to the north and east of where we're looking right now. And a pass-through station doesn't literally have to pass through as long as it's a stop on the way. So here's a case where we're going to go from Idaho Falls up to those logs right up there to Young Logging. We're going to stop, have a stop there. Then we're going to turn and go up screen to Missoula. So you can see we're not actually even going to pass through the uh, logging. We're going to treat it as a Y, W-Y-E uh, junction. And basically just do a turn there to go up to Missoula where we want to go. We are, we'll, of course, we'll have a stop. So it'll be Idaho Falls to the logging and then over to Missoula, back to the logs and down to Idaho Falls. So that'll be the, the, the complete route. But uh, I just wanted to show you this to show you that you can be a little creative. You don't have to literally pass through a pass-through pass rural station. You can uh, feel free to uh, use a Y-type setup like this. So as you can see, we've just been relentlely building these city-to-city uh, -city lines with uh, pass-through rural stations. As I wanted to show you this one because here's another example of getting a two-for-one. We've got wheat and we've got uh, veggies here. Now, it could be that those veggies will never get picked up, but we might as well have them in, in line and ready to go if we can get them. So here we're going to run a line from Missoula to the city there on the far west, uh, oh, Spokane. I couldn't, <laughs> I couldn't remember what it was, it's Spokane. Spokane, Washington. So uh, we're gonna run a line through and it actually works out pretty nicely here. It looks like it might be a horrible tunnel kind of deal, but it, it actually isn't. It go, we go through there pretty, pretty cleanly and hook up with that uh, Wilson Farm, which now has two uh, resources available for us and um, 
once we have that done, then then we can run run uh, again another pass through station. This time with two two things on on the, hooked up. Whether or not we ever use them again, I don't know if we'll ever get to the veggies. Uh, certainly not during this playthrough. We won't make it. But if you kept playing, you probably would. All right, I need to correct something I said a minute ago. We actually have to 1914 to get our quarterly revenue up to 2.5 million. And that's actually uh, 1910, 11, 12, 13, 14. That's actually five years. So we would have two and a half years. So we would have 1910, 1911, and June of 1912 to hit that target. So I said December of 1911. It's actually June of 1912. Uh, so we're in pretty good shape here. So let's just keep on rocking and rolling until we come to the next interesting bit. And please do notice while this is just flying by how we just keep building and keep building and keep building. Whenever you have a goal like that in front of you, it's a big goal for a large quarterly profit, particularly when you're going to use the method we're doing here with the pass-through warehouses and building out, 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 out. You, then you just got, as soon as you have the money to build something, you need to build it and you need to start making money on it. Now, the, one of the beauties of this particular uh, approach is that every time you build something, it's almost instantly contributing profit to your bottom line because you're starting to run profitable trains right off the bat. Um, of course, you have to make a big investment to do it. But again, spend your money as fast as you can. Don't sit there and watch it. Don't sit there and try to accumulate, you know, a whole bunch of money for, for whatever reason, unless there's some special case where you need that money. And we'll get to a couple of those here in a minute. But uh, just keep building. Now, one of the optional tasks that we have is to establish an express line between Cheyenne and Elko. And I haven't really shown it in here, but the other thing that's happening here is that more coal and iron are, have been discovered out here to the west, out here in the Elko area. So what happens here is in, in, this, in this scenario, we have two centers of operation, so to speak, two main places where the warehouses are built that take that create the demand for the coal and the iron. One, of course, was in Cheyenne where we started, and the other one is way out here to the west in Elko. And so uh, one of the tasks they have, uh, which I think is really good, is to have a an express connection between those two cities and it just makes perfect sense if I mean from a realism point of view if those are the two cities that um, are the keys to the whole whole deal the whole you know getting the, the iron and the uh, coal to the east uh, then it makes sense that people would want to have a good route to be able to go back and forth between those lots of businessmen all kinds of investors everybody so this just makes perfect sense and now uh, f uh, <laughs> flesh off, <laughs> flesh off, fresh off my um, track laying success over in uh, the gold rush where I did that uh, uh, crossing between San Francisco and Carson City. I thought, well, I'm getting pretty good at this. I'm going to do it again. So I'm going to build a big fancy uh, um, thing hanging off the edge of the cliffs and try to, you know, minimize bridges and, and tunnels and and uh, I've kind of learned that the, if you need one of these, the technique is really uh, to kind of kind of just be don't be afraid to kind of swing out a little bit. You have to put some kind of kind of a looping curve in it along the grid lines or along I just keep calling them grid along the contour lines like that. See how that kind of gets rid of the the tunnel because now you're kind of building that track on a on a level spot and it's just hanging on the edge of the cliff. So you can see there, that, that's, a, that's a pretty clean line, isn't it? Now, I have a lot more to say about that in a little bit, a little bit later. But for now, just suffice to say that, I've got, that I'm building this line and I'm following the contours and I'm getting rid of all the tunnels and bridges and making it a, a reasonable um, investment. 
and then we're going to start running passenger and mail only uh, trains uh, on that line to try to get our express uh, line established. And by the way, if you want a perfect score, you need to do the bonus. You need to do the optional uh, tasks uh, as a general uh, rule. I, th I think I, in fact, I'm not sure you can get a perfect score without doing them. Um, you have to have them have them done. So anyway, that's what we're establishing here. And I'm going to, again, fast forward through this because I'm, I'm, I just want to show you the main things and the things that are, you know, thing, things to note. So note, notice that with the, uh, that beautiful little uh, uh, line that, that uh, goes through that mountain pass and, and doesn't cost an arm and a leg. All right, so we get that lovely little ding again that we've completed a task. And I'm right in the middle of setting up this uh, express line or this passenger and mail line, so I don't quite look. But we will in a moment. We'll check it out and see what uh, um, what we got here, what we finished. Now, we're not, we're not on a quarter end yet, so there couldn't have been that. All right, so now we've got 10 cities connected with a population of at least 20,000. So kind of just got into that. And there we're going to immediately get another one as the quarter ends, and we hit our 2.5 million. So I guess uh, when I was I kept saying December of 1911, uh, I kept thinking that was the date, and I was thinking, oh, man, we barely made it. We actually made it with six months to spare, but uh, still, we made it just the same. So we've made it through the three hardest uh, objectives on this particular scenario in terms of trying to get a perfect score. We're, we're in great shape now. Spoiler alert, we're going to make it. All right, so um, you can also see our money racking up as I'm taking the time building this line and setting up the trains and stuff. Look at the how our money's building up. We're, our economy is really strong now. We have a huge uh, footprint. We've got lots and lots of cities uh, on board, so we're in great shape now. So now we need to uh, get a couple more stations hooked, in, hooked into our network. The style we've used has just naturally been bringing them on every time we uh, do another city to city line. And uh, we also need to start producing irons, which means we're going to have to own iron uh, mines. But the good news is there are new iron mines over here in Elko that haven't been hooked up anywhere, so they're not going to be that expensive, whereas the ones over in Cheyenne have been pumping out iron and, and selling it off and making a profit, so they are going to be much more expensive. So here's the big thing I wanted to show you, though. This is the key to getting your uh, express lines. I know a lot of you have stated you have struggled with these, and I think one of the problems is they're extremely poorly uh, documented. But anyway, if you notice, that, uh, first of all, I'm taking advantage of the new functionality. When I delete those lines, I hit delete. It gives me that little ding. I hit delete again, and it deletes the line and sends the trains back to their original station. So you don't lose the trains. They just requeue. Beautiful. So now we can make a mass correction. So what we're going to do here is make sure that we don't use that beautiful uh, line that I built across the mountains. Why? It was too pretty and it wasn't functional enough. We need a straight shot. We need our trains. If we want express trains, we need our express trains to be able to maintain their speed, which means no big grades. We can't have them chugging up a, a mountain and hugging along a mountainside with a bunch of steep and tight curves and what have you to slow them down. We need them to just rock and roll. So we are going to straighten out this track and flatten it out. And, it's, and it costs a small fortune to do that. But now, at this point in the game, we've got the money. So one thing here I would probably, if I was going to do this one over in hindsight, now that I see this, um, I wouldn't have even built that uh, first uh, pass at that line going over to... Um, Salt Lake City to Elko because for the 
even though I, I built it cheaply, if you will, without a lot of bridges and tunnels, it still was expensive and the trains have to go so far and they take them so long, you don't really make money that you could, there are better investments you could make with your money. Um, but once you can afford to build it like this with the tunnel, and we're going to keep targeting to, to move forward now with our trains and get faster trains and more reliable trains, and we want to get over there to the Hudson eventually, uh, would be nice to run our express. But we've got the uh, Berkshire, and it's, it, it'll be fine. So, <clears throat> uh, again, the point is, uh, to get an express line, you need to have the fastest train that's available at the time. So if one, one of your competitors has researched the Hudson and they're running it somewhere and you're not running it, you're not going to get an express line because they're going to just, their speed is just going to be a lot better than yours. You're going to be unimpressive. But on top of that, you also need to be able to keep your train at a good clip. So you it, running it through a whole bunch of uh, uh, steep inclines is not going to work. So just keep that in mind. Run the fastest train, put, put, uh, um, uh, staff on it to to boost the trains and uh, and there's two different things here if you're just trying to get an express line for the sake of having one like in this case go ahead and use the speed bonus guys get you a speed bonus engineer and a speed bonus stoker and put on other staff that make them happy give them a caboose so that they're they give an even bigger boost and you'll have an easy time getting a, an express line so provided you're running the fastest possible train on the other hand, if you're trying to get a bunch of express lines, like you're playing as the lady and you're trying to make a lot of money on express lines, then stay away. This is silly. It sounds silly, but it's a very good point that Tritum makes. Stay away from those um, speed bonuses unless you can give them to everybody because what will happen is the one that's the fastest with the speed bonus is going to take the express away from everybody else. So they're going to set a standard nobody else can reach. So uh, you really kind of want to get your maintenance guys on there to keep them all running, but you don't necessarily want the speed bonuses for a speed train, as, as um, you know, counterintuitive as that may seem. So hopefully that makes sense. But, but in the case here where we're just trying to tick one off and, you know, get, get, a, a line, then um, by all means, uh, grab a, 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 an engineer and a stoker that can give you a speed bonus and put them on the same train. Now, what we're doing here to set up the rest of this, this is really the, the end of the, the road for us. We just need to, we, we bought that uh, uh, iron ore mine up there. It was very, it was cheap. And because it hasn't been used yet, it hasn't been routed anywhere. And what we're going to do is build a direct line from it down to a large warehouse. This is the first warehouse we've used in this entire build. Uh, a large warehouse at Elko. And we're going to run iron ore down there. We're going to piggyback on this line with another iron ore mine that's over to the west towards Spokane. We're going to grab that coal that you can see right now on the screen. We're going to buy that and start pumping coal down there. We're going to grab another coal. Um, we're going to go back even to the ones in Cheyenne, make sure that we've got those uh, uh, pumping out as fast as we can. And um, then we're just going to uh, wait for that, uh, keep an eye on to see if we get that express train. Because it's really once you, you know, you can do what you, do what you can to try to get it, but you have to just kind of wait till it happens. And the other thing is it does have to take at least one full tour and establish a time before it can come back and beat that time um, with, a, with a subsequent tour. So it, it takes a while to get an express train. They don't just, you don't get them as soon as you build the, put the train out there on a, on a line. So um, I think I'd, I'd like to just go ahead and, and uh, fast forward through the rest of this because it really is just, track building 101 kind of stuff and we have lots of videos to help you with that uh the purpose of this these these two videos was really just to show you um this pass-through technique how to really take advantage of the engineer or one way to take advantage of the engineer show you just how strong the engineer is as a, as a character and um and just show you how to get a perfect score on a, on a pretty tough um, uh, mission or excuse me scenario um, it's an easy mission, like I said, to finish it, but it's a tough one to get a perfect score on. So let's just uh, move on ahead. Oh, 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 I'm sorry. There is one more thing I do want to show you. 
one other optional task we have is to buy out our competitors. So you can see here by setting this up, by buying these um, mines that we're good on the, on the iron and the coal. And even the production of the coal, we've got plenty of trains running and, we've got to, and we'll be able to boost those up. And I guess now that I think about it, that's one other thing to talk about is that, um, remember one of the weaknesses of the engineer is it cost him 70% more to upgrade one of his businesses. Well, we want to upgrade these here and buy in the next iron mine. When we buy it, we're going to want to start upgrading it to boost our production, to get our daily production up to 10. Well, that's going to cost us a lot of money with the, with the engineer, but because we're in later in the game and we've got this strong economic footprint that we're uh, basing everything off of, money is not a problem. And you will see just how much money is not a problem here in a minute. But uh, this is how you overcome the engineer's weakness. You don't build your businesses right up front and you don't expect to upgrade them, grade, sorry, upgrade them immediately. You expect to upgrade them as you're further down the road, which just makes sense. Uh, that's the way you play it with him because uh, it's going to cost a, a lot of money to do the upgrades. So you've got to be very careful when you do it. So later on, when you got lots of money, you're cool. So now let's move ahead to one last point I want to make, and we'll wrap this up. So one of our optional tasks is to buy one of our competitors. So we're going to take a look at that uh, right now. Now that we're strong, now that we've got an economy, we're going to take a look at our competitors. And frankly, I haven't paid any attention to them up until now. Uh, and my attitude toward competitors, I do like to block them off when I can, uh, but I'm more interested in just doing a really good job growing. And you'll notice we're way bigger than they are. So to buy out Don Lorenzo is going to cost us about two million bucks. That will not take very long. We're, we have solid, strong economy now, so two million bucks is uh, really pretty cheap. So we'll ask for some more uh, um, passengers with, with that uh, market crier. And we're just, now here's the case where you do accumulate cash. If you just, when you're at that point where you're ready to pull the trigger and buy a competitor, that's one time you do uh, start accumulating some cash. So we're taking a look to see. Now, keep in mind too, we need to have an express line. And I don't know what trains the competitors are running. For all I know, one of our competitors has, has a much, you know, is way ahead of us on research and is running a Hudson or something like that. And we're only running the um, uh, Berkshire. So uh, if they're running a Hudson, we're going to have a, well, we're just not going to get a, an express line. So wh what I want to do here actually is take out the competitors. And if the competitors are gone, then it's just, just us. And then we should have a, a much better chance of getting an express line. And I'm still looking at where can I buy these businesses and and make the money. I love to buy the business when you got a deal like this with unlimited uh, demand and where you can just uh, pump out the money. So we see we can get about 1.6, probably 1.7 for the next one. So we can get about 3.3 million in bonds after we pay that one. So we're gonna have to raise enough money, pay off the one, and then we could raise about 3.3 million. So uh, Beatrix is, would cost us four, four point five or something. She'll grow some in the meantime. They always do. Uh, but as long as we have about a million in cash plus a couple of bonds, we should be good. So let's move ahead just a little bit because right now I really am in just sort of. Uh, well, here I'm checking. For example, we're still trying to get that production up. So I'm I'm looking to see if we. Yeah, we've only been running one train on one line, so we're going to double track it now and add another train in there so we can improve our throughput. But uh, nothing exciting here. Let's just uh, bounce forward a little bit. 
All right, so at this point, we're there we go. We've repaid our bonds, and now we are uh, in a ready to move. So we're going to open up two big bonds, biggest we can get, and we're up to almost four million in cash right off the bat. Then we're going to take a look to see what's it going to cost us to buy out Beatrix. And as you see, she's gone up in value a little bit. We wouldn't mind an analyst to come along now, but they never do when they want them. But no problem. Look how fast we're accumulating cash. And we're certainly growing faster than she can grow. Uh, we're many times larger than uh, Beatrix's company. So we're going to be able to buy out her in one big gulp with 100% uh, of shares. I remember when that promoter hop popped up up there. Well, anyway, there she goes. There we got Beatrix, and we're going to do a merge, and we're going to just uh, liquidate everything and take the money. So that gives us plenty of money that we can then go and do it again. So look at this. Look how hard it was to buy uh, Trisha. And here I think I made a mistake. Yeah, <laughs> I kept everything. I don't know why. I cost myself a bunch of cash there. I could have got liquidated her and gotten all of her cash. I don't like to keep their stuff. They're just awful. Now, another task is completed, obviously. We, we bought out a competitor, but we've also finished out our iron shipments. So we've got enough. Uh, we've shipped enough iron. We've got to ship some more coal, get our production up. We're looking uh, really good here. And while I'm in, in the mood to buy, and while I'm out shopping, I uh, might as well go ahead and finish it off and buy out uh, Don Lorenzo. And I was actually looking around to see, I, I, you know, now here's why I hate those mergers where you don't liquidate, because now all that stuff becomes my color, and I've just got all this other blue stuff out there, and it's stuff I didn't build. I know where it is. It's up to the north, uh, north of Idaho Falls, north of... Um, um, Billings or whatever that city is it's up in that area so now here goes Don Lorenzo soon and this is where I got, I just started clicking in every which direction I don't know what what was the, what was the matter here And there we go. There goes Don Lorenzo. And this time, I think I did it right. Yeah, bye-bye, Don. There we go. So now we've gotten rid of all the competition. We've still come out of it with a whole bunch of cash. We're in great shape to finish up. All we've got to do now is, is uh, keep bumping up our, our production on our iron and keep shipping it, keep shipping the coal. Um, and uh, we are good to go. So let's just move ahead to the end and see how we did. And oh, there you, you know, so I even bought that big expensive uh, clay pit so that I could uh, um, claim its production. Now, this one was a little too pricey, but um, I, I, we now have, we've got everything done except for the t 10 uh, per week. I said per day, I think earlier, 10 per week of iron, which we can get. Now remember for that production, you have to both produce it in your um, station or your or your factory and be able to ship it. So we got to make sure we have plenty of trains that are available to take that stuff right away when it comes off the line and uh, keep bumping up our production. And it's much better when you got a goal like that to have multiple farms or mines, mines in this case, and upgrade them each across kind of evenly across rather than trying to have one that goes all the way up to the top because they get so expensive the, the bigger update upgrades get really expensive so it's better to just like that just go back to the smaller one and upgrade it and we'll get that up there no problem and no problem carrying the coal so we're in good shape let's go ahead and see how we did
So you can see here we need about three more trains to show up and we'll be done. Uh, trains of, of coal, that is. We're almost there. And here we go. We, we, and I should mention that as soon as we got rid of our competitors, uh, we got an express line just shortly right after that. So here we see we got president, we got 10 out of 10, and we got our 20 out of 20. Got a perfect score. It took us about four years. When it says three years, 12 months, it looks silly, but it really means we were in the 12th month of that um, uh, fourth year, I guess. So three years, 12 months, uh, perfect score. Uh, very pleased with it. I uh, hope you enjoyed that, and I hope you got something out of it that will help your game. I hope you enjoyed this. I hope it'll help you become a better player, and I hope you'll join us for our next Railway Empire video. Thank you.